Hey, what's up guys? It's Pedro here from NoobCoder.com and welcome back to part two of my tutorial series on authentication and authorization with the Mern stack. And in this video, I just want to go over the mongoose part of this series. All right, so to get started, I'm going to create a couple of models. So I'm just going to head over to our package explorer. I'm going to right click new folder and we're going to create a folder called models. And the first model I want to create is called user. So user.js. So now let's require mongoose. So I'm just going to say cons mongoose is equal to require mongoose. And now what I want to do is create our schema. So a schema is basically a blueprint that every document within this user collection has to follow. So I'm just going to say cons user schema. I'm going to say new mongoose dot schema. And we're going to pass in this object. Now within this object, we're going to define what properties a user document has to follow by. So a user has to have a username. And this username has to be of type string. So the good thing with mongoose is that you actually get type checking. So for example, if the client sends us back a number, for example, as a username, that is going to get rejected because it has to be of type string. And then here I could say it has to be required because you can't have a user document without a username. That wouldn't make any sense. And we could also make it so that it has to be of minimum length. So I'm going to make it six and a maximum length of, let's say, 15. And we could define another property of a user. So I'm going to come down here. A user has to have a password. And we're going to make this of type string. And we're going to make it required and set that to true. And our third property is going to be the role. So what role does this user have? Is he an admin? Is he a user? Is he a moderator? You can make whatever role you want. So we're going to make this of type string. And we only want predetermined roles. So I don't want the user to give us any role that they want. So I'm just going to say enum. And enum is going to make it so that they have to choose between a set of roles. So the first role that they could be is, of course, they could be a user or they could be an admin in our example. And we're going to make this a requirement. And we're going to set that to true. Now, the fourth property is our to do's. So we haven't created our to do's, but we'll do that pretty soon. So to do's is going to be an array of to do's, and this is going to contain as a type mongoose.schema.type dot object ID. And we're gonna reference the to do model that we haven't created yet. So basically what to do's is gonna contain is an array of the object ID of the to do. And of course the object ID is the primary key of that to do. And what we're going to do later within this series is use a function called populate in order to fill this array with the corresponding to do's. So we'll see how that works within a later video. All right. So next, what I want to do is actually install another module. So I'm just going to come up here and I'm going to say const bcrypt. And we're just going to require this. So if you don't know what bcrypt is, is Basically, we use bcrypt to hash the password. In other words, we encrypt it. And the reason for this is if your database ever gets compromised, a hacker is not going to have access to the passwords of everyone within your database because the password is going to be encrypted. So now I'm just going to come down here and I'm going to show you what we're actually going to use it or how we're going to use this. So I'm just going to come down here. And the first thing I should probably do is actually install this module. So I'm just going to bring up the terminal. Make sure you are in the root directory. 
that you're not within the client directory. And I'm just going to type npm install bcrypt. All right, we're just going to let this run. All right, after that, let's close that. And now what I want to do is define a mongoose pre hook. So I'm just going to say user dot pre. And this code is going to execute right before we save. And the reason for that is because we need to hash the password before we actually save it into the database. So this is going to accept a function. And this function is going to have an argument called next. Now, basically what this is, is Mongoose's version of middleware. So it's going to work exactly the same. Once you're done, you should execute the next function to symbolize that you could go on to the next save. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to say if this dot is modified. And right now we're checking to see whether or not we need to hash. So we're going to check to see if it's modified and we're going to check the password field. And if this is true, we're going to call next. So what this block of code is doing is is checking to see if our password field within the document has been modified already. If it has been modified, that means there's no need to hash the password. So we only want to hash the password if it's plain text. So two test cases would be if the user just created his account and in that case, his password is not hashed. Or if let's say, for example, the user wants to change his password to a new password. That means that password isn't hashed yet. And so we would need to hash it. So if it gets past this check right here, that means that we need to hash it. So now I could call bcrypt and we could use a function called hash. And hash, the first argument is going to take in is the password that you want to hash. The second argument is the salt or rounds. So this is basically saying how strong you want the encryption to be. So I'm going to set it as 10 because that's the example they give within the docs. Next, we're going to pass in a callback. So we're going to have error and we're going to get back the password that's hashed. And one thing I want to clear up we are using the old function. Do not use the arrow function because we want access to this. So if you use the arrow function, you will get an error. So use the old function here. Then we have our standard stuff. So if there's an error, what we're going to do is return next and we're just going to pass in that error. Otherwise, if there is no error, that means we successfully have our password hashed. So now all we need to do is override our existing password and set it to the password hash. And then all we need to do is actually call next to symbolize that we're done. Okay, so this looks good. Uh, so what I wanna do is actually test this later on within this video. So if you don't exactly understand what a hash is or we'll get to it. So, so this is done right here. And now what I want to do is actually add a method. So we're just going to say user schema dot methods dot compare password. Now compare password is going to be a function and it's going to take in the password and a callback. So the reason we need a compare password function is because we need a way to compare the plain text version of the password that we receive from the client to the hashed version within our database. So luckily for us, bcrypt has a compare function that we can use. So I'm just going to say bcrypt and I'm going to say compare and this is going to be a function. So the first thing that we're going to pass in is the password from the client. So let's say he's trying to sign in. 
The second argument is going to be the hashed password. So I'm just going to say dis.password. And the third argument is going to be a callback. And we should get the match as the second argument within the callback. Okay, so standard stuff. We're just going to say if there's an error, we're going to return the callback with the error. Otherwise, what we're going to do is if it is not a match, we are going to return the callback and we're going to pass in null for the error object and we're just going to pass in match. So this is going to get executed if the password that they gave us does not match the password within our database. Otherwise, what we're going to do is return the callback once again, pass in null for the error argument, and we're going to pass in this. And this is obviously the user. So this is going to end up attaching the user object to the request object. And we'll see this in action within the later video. All right, so the last thing we need to do for our user model is actually export it. So I'm just going to say model. So I'm just going to say module.exports. And we're going to export mongoose.model. And this is going to be the name of the model, which is user. And now we need to pass in the schema that we just made. Okay, so now what I want to do is actually test this out. So I'm just going to save this. Let's head over back to our app.js file. And we're going to use a hackerish way since we don't have our front end yet. So the only way we could test this is server side. So I'm just going to require the model that we just created. And now what we need to do is fake the user input. So I'm just going to say const user input. And we're going to create the object here. So I'm just going to say a username of new coder, one, two, three, four. And we need to give it a password. And this could be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we could give it a role of admin, for example. Now, obviously, this is going to come from the client in our real application. Next, we're going to actually have to use our user model. So I'm just going to say const user is equal to new user. And we're going to pass in the user input. And this is going to create a mongoose document for us. Next, we're going to call our save method. And we're going to pass in a callback, which is going to get error and the document itself. So now if there's an error, it means something went wrong. We're just going to print it out. And if there is no error, let's just print out the document itself. So I am just going to save this. I'm going to open the terminal. Now let's run this. So npm run dev. And there you go. So we successfully connected to the database and we created a document. So here to do is an empty array. We haven't created anything. Underscore ID is the primary key, our username here. And you can see that the password is indeed being hashed. And we have a row of admin. Okay, so this is working. And you can see that before this user actually gets saved inside the database. You can see that our pre hook is executing. So it says, Hey, before you save, I want you to check to see if the password's hashed. If it's not hashed, then you need to come down here and hash it. And that's why you see it saved here with the hashed password. Okay. So this is good. Uh, we don't have enough code yet to use the compare password, but in the next video we should.
but I just wanted to, to show you what's happening inside. So now let's actually create a second model or to do model. And I promise you there's a lot less to write for our to do model. And I am going to cheat. So I'm just going to copy all this. And let's paste this. So we need to call it to do. And this needs to be to do schema. We're going to delete a lot of this. Let's get rid of all of that. Again, this is going to be a to do schema. We don't need bcrypt because we're not dealing with passwords. And our to-do is going to be very, very simple. So I'm just going to say name. And this is going to be the only property of our to-do. It's going to be of type string. And it's going to be a requirement. Okay, so like I said, to-do is very, very simple. So I'm just going to save this. And this is pretty much all I wanted to cover for this tutorial. I wanted to cover all the mongoose stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.